Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and there's a topic that always comes up no matter what it is, whether it's a video that I'm posting, some comments on that, maybe something on social media, whether it's uh, through other photographers that I'm training, something always comes back to color. And that's a, a tough subject for a lot of people because we think, well, you know, these high megapixel cameras that we're using with great dynamic range, they're going to get the color accurate all the time. And if not, then we just tweak the white balance. But there is so much more to it than just that. And I can attest to that from years of being an engineer and working in web design also before I became a full-time photographer, that there is a lot of color science to what we're doing. But understanding some of that color science has two main problems with it. One, the misinformation that is spread out there by a lot of other YouTubers and by a lot of other uh, bloggers or the lack of information that you really don't have from your camera manufacturers or even the software that is available to you. But if you try to find the real root cause of some of these things, if you do get the correct information, it may be in such a sciencey format that it can be even more daunting and more difficult. And that's why a lot of times a lot of photographers don't address it at its core or when they try to, they get the wrong information. So what I've done to make this more concise is I've tackled this in a new book called Mastering Color in Photography, A Simple Approach to professional results. And the idea behind this is we don't need to take a super complicated step to get into knowing high level math to understand color, but we need to know the tools that are available to us, what really is going on behind the scenes, not just with our cameras, but also the cameras, the lenses, the software that we're using, the hardware that we're using with that, and then validation steps that go along with that. There's a lot to cover along with that, but keeping it into a concise, to the point, simple to understand format was the goal of this book. It's got over 230 different diagrams, figures, images to guide you through step by step through different things in software and discuss some of the misunderstood things. For instance, some of the things with raw files that are completely completely misstated by so many photographers out there when it comes to color. Um, also some of the software out there and some people will say it's like, well, this will get you better results with raw files, but why they don't and why sometimes even raw files just themselves are not really raw files after certain software tries to enhance them. So things beyond that that go into what happens when we try to expose for color to a certain degree. Yes, we probably know about histograms by now, but what really is going on in the tonal range when we then apply a certain algorithm. And you might not realize it, but when you're adjusting saturation or vibrance or clarity, you are adjusting an algorithm. You're inputting different variables into that and the results of that will vary depending on the software that you're using. So I try to cover as many packages as I can to understand a little bit about what's going on while encompassing that overarching type of thing. But then what do you do about the color editing itself? What what is the most important thing about color editing? I've got an entire chapter, a big chapter in this new book, and it's on the color editing essentials. Things that are important no matter what program you're using. I do put a concentration, of course, on the Adobe products because they are the 800 pound gorilla, you know, in the marketplace nowadays, but it's not the only thing out there. And sometimes they are not the right tool for the job. So I address that in this book as well. And it goes beyond that too. If you're going to be working with any type of professional work, eventually you will need to do validation steps. And a lot of people think, well, that's just looking at the clipping indicators uh, it's to make sure nothing's clipped or making sure the white balance is correct but it goes way beyond that. For one, the clipping indicators, if you're using Lightroom, they're highly inaccurate and I prove why in this particular book and show then better methods that you can use to do true clipping validation, also saturation validation, and then also other validation steps so you can understand, am I really looking at the proper picture the way that somebody else would want to then view it and then possibly edit too if you're working with a pro company on that or 
you might just have to prove to them that no, I've got something that goes beyond just the clipping validation, saturation validation, and other validation steps. So I've got this whole thing wrangled. So you can work as a pro with this and use it then as a reference guide for when this comes up. That applies also to soft proofing, which is uh, not exactly the best thing for a lot of circumstances. It used to be, and I'm going to explain why and some of the things in that when you get inside the book here. A couple things on the book itself too. I always recommend buying the ebook for one. It's cheaper. It can be read on the uh, free Kindle app on any device. You can read it on an iPhone, on your desktop, um, on a tablet. Doesn't matter. There's a cloud reader too that's free that uh, Kindle provides. You don't need a Kindle hardware piece. Now, the paperback, because it's in textbook quality, it's a very expensive puppy to print. So you will see a higher price on that paperback book. But I also include in this particular version, a way to take a look at some of the high-res versions of the images. And I explain that in the hard, the, the excuse me, the uh, paperback version of this book as well. So anyways, you can pick either one. I do have a link in the description for the video for both of these books, uh, whether it's the ebook or the paperback version. And I'm going to be building off of this as I start making other videos throughout the next year or two years. So if you do want to learn more about this, I suggest though getting the ebook or the paperback book, start working through that. If you want to see more videos and you haven't yet, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost anything. And as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.